Hey everyone, in today's video I would like to talk about the power of extroverted feeling because the truth is a lot of people tend to underestimate this function. Perhaps it's the most underestimated cognitive function. And there is a reason for this. Let's talk about the danger of extroverted feeling and why it's a dangerous function, why it's potentially harmful, why it's potentially a superpower. First of all, let's start off with a problem. A lot of extroverted feeling types struggle with getting into one-sided relationships. INFJs, among others, struggle with getting into relationships where they give and give and give and never receive in return. A lot of INFJs, ENFJs, ESFJs and ISFJs struggle with putting other people's needs before their own. INFJs, they know how to talk, they know how to get people to feel better, but they don't know how to share up themselves. INFJs, they know how to put other people first, but they don't know how to prioritize themselves and their own needs. Therefore, INFJs tend to end up feeling used by other people, because the more you give uh, without getting back, the more resentful you can become. When INFJs give and invest in other people and get little back, they can become resentful and that's what can trigger the cycle that leads eventually to a door slam. At some point you keep giving and the less you receive the more you try to give and at some point the giving becomes almost about proving a point. You're trying to show the other person that you want something and you're trying to give something to the other person. You're trying to make it so clear to them that what you need but they're not seeing it and at some point you can only assume the worst. This person must be a narcissist, this person must be a sociopath, this person must have manipulated me, this person must have known all along, this person must have just been a monster. Because if they were human they'd see, they'd listen to me, they'd take me seriously, they'd care for me, they would support me the way I support them. Extroverted feeling types are amazing at managing other people. Extroverted feeling types beyond that are meant to lead and spark passion in the masses. When you look at the most powerful extroverted feeling types, then you think of people like Barack Obama, Martin Luther King, people with a voice and with a charisma. People with strong extroverted feeling are dangerous because they can get people to the streets, they can get people to lift their pitchforks, they can get people to feel fire and passion and energy and heat. They can unite people across a country to one cause. Yeah, people with strong extroverted feeling have the potential to drive rebellions and uprisings, to topple governments, to uh, change paradigms, to bring about new ideas that become so powerful that they are spread in every community, across every neighborhood, over weeks through word of mouth people reciting and repeating what you said, people that find themselves thinking about what you said weeks afterwards. Extorted feeling has the power to infest people's minds the way memes can infest our minds today, you know. Extorted feeling has the power to get people to feel a certain way or think a certain way, you know. It's what kind of connects and so it's a superpower and so it's something dangerous. It's easy to see then how harmful and potentially lethal it can be because a person with bad intentions or a person with a lack of self-awareness can use this voice to manipulate people. And so it's said that the dark side of an exerted feeling type is that of a cult leader. Somebody that will make you feel good about yourself. Somebody that will know exactly what strings to pull. Somebody that knows exactly what insecurities you have. Somebody that is able to use and manipulate and push you just the right way. And so you end up doing everything they ask of you. And they, you end up being manipulated by everything they do. You know, it's said that extorted feeling can be just that dangerous. You know, it can get a person to stop thinking for themselves. It can get a person to accept anything, to do anything. And it can get people to feel like they have no agency or sense of self anymore. They only have what you've told them. They only feel and think the way that you've allowed them to think and feel. So it's interesting then that so many extroverted feeling types feel so powerless. 
If extroverted feeling can be just so dangerous, if extroverted feeling can be just so powerful, enough to topple a government or enough to start a worldwide cult of millions of supporters, enough to form a religion, then how is it that you as an extroverted feeling type is not able to get your voice heard in a relationship with one single other person? When you're an extroverted feeling type, you might first come to misunderstand what extroverted feeling is. The first starting point is thinking that it has to do with pleasing other people or making other people happy. Obviously, when you're an extroverted feeling type, you can certainly do that. And I would say that's the level one of what extroverted feeling is, knowing how to make another person feel good. That's like level one, but there's 99 levels beyond that, you know. What I'm seeing is a lot of people don't really graduate beyond that and then, you know they get stuck in that nice guy or nice girl paradigm where it's constantly just delivering a sweet, pleasant, nice image to the world that everyone will agree with, a meek and simple version of yourself. But when you're skilled at extroverted feeling, when you're powerful at extroverted feeling, you know how to honestly communicate what you want in a way that sparks passion and fire in other people. When you're good at extroverted feeling, when you spend time honing it and when you're confident in it and you talk with it in a strong and fierce and powerful way, you are infinitely charismatic. Extroverted feeling, especially in extroverted feeling dominance or auxiliary types, can become a superpower. The thing is, INFJs and ISFJs often struggle the most with this function because it is the auxiliary function. The auxiliary function is naturally hard to develop, it's important and it's highly valued, but it's very difficult to master. The tertiary function on the other hand, it's not really valued, but you're naturally good at it. So, so a lot of INFJs and ISFJs get caught in the introverted thinking trap. So what ends up happening is you let your tertiary function puncture your auxiliary function. Any form of extroverted feeling that you allow yourself to express is meek and agreeable and simple when it could be something that had more edge. Introverted thinking can make you self-critical. It can make you constantly thinking about how you please and how you fit in with society. It can make you constantly focus on your performance and being liked and how good you are at the task. When INFJs and ISFJs value themselves purely by what value they contribute to society, their skill set, or being perfect, that also means their extroverted feeling isn't allowed to flourish or to become what it's capable of being. Extroverted feeling has the power to challenge you to go out of your comfort zone in connecting with the human tribe. When you listen to extroverted feeling it will be that radiant sun it will be that radiant source of energy that says go out and talk to people when you listen to introverted thinking introverted thinking will be that voice that says i don't know if people will like you i don't know if people will agree with you i don't know if people will accept you maybe you should retreat isolate yourself you know go to a cottage you know uh, turn off everything, you know, ghost all your friends, you know, like um, just work on yourself. Yeah, I think you just need to work on yourself a little bit more before you're allowed to be out in the sunlight with other people, you know. Other people, they can be out in the sunlight with each other and have fun and do whatever they like, but you, you need to work on yourself first. You need to really, uh, you know, close your eyes, you know, like get everyone out of your face, you know, you need to round off and, you know, like, work on yourself, fix yourself first, because you're not good enough, you know, like, <laughs> that's the introverted thinking voice, you know, like on the INFJ and on the ISFJ to some extent, you know. So that's why it really punctures your extroverted feeling, because when you're in a tertiary loop, when, you know, when introverted thinking leads, what ends up happening is, yeah, when you do communicate with other people, you give baby 20% of your extroverted feeling dose, you know, you give to the extent that you think other people will ex accept you, you do and you say things only to the extent that you think people will agree with you. You share only to the extent that you think you can prove what you're talking about. But introverted intuition exists on a much wider frame than that. 
In terms of the intuition, your dominant function as 9 of J is and deals with speculative information. It deals with vision, symbols, ideas, powerful ideas, ideas that matter, you know, like true this, your idea has potential and it has a direction and it's leading somewhere interesting and fascinating, you know, but you can't prove it. You can't know for sure where you're going to end up. You don't know if you're capable of doing what you want to achieve yet. You don't know if you have the skills to back it up. You don't know if you can survive doing your or honoring your vision. You don't know what's on the other side of the rainbow. So if introverted thinking is holding you in your grip, it's going to dismiss that range that is speculative and uncertain. So that's also why INFJs can have difficulties talking with other people. A lot of INFJs find it hard to open up and have deep conversations with other people. They'll experience human connections and relationships as shallow and superficial. You'll feel like, oh, everyone around you is a sensory type. Everyone around you only talks about the weather. Everyone around you only cares about, you know, uh, day-to-day matters. Nobody has any interest in philosophy or whatever you are care, care about or is passionate about. But that's also because of how you talk about it. Because what I'm seeing is a lot of these INFJs that complain about being surrounded by sensors is they also, when they do open up and when they do share of their introvert intuition, they do so very dismissively. They think that they're being stupid. They think that they're being boring. They think that other people don't want to hear anything. They think that other people don't care. And so they fake it. They fake the superficial talk. They fake the small talk. They dumb themselves down. They make things overly simple. They make things seem great and simple and easy and sensory, you know. And so they lose their intuitive friends and connections. They lose their ability to meet with people that care about the things that they care about. Because, you know, when you talk about your passion and you allow yourself to have a passion, you become a radiant beacon of light that attracts other people to you, people that want to be part of your tribe. When you uh, shapeshift, and that's what people think extroverted feeling is. They think extroverted feeling is about being a shapeshifter. But in reality, it's more about inferior extroverted sensing. INFJs in the grip of extroverted sensing become shapeshifters. They mold themselves to their environment. Look, you're not molding yourself to other people. Because what kind of people are you molding yourself to? No, you're molding yourself to your environment. You're ad- having an adaptive response out of fear. You're trying to fit in. You're afraid of the tribe coming after you. You're afraid of losing your status. You're afraid of people laughing at you or finding you boring or judging you for your ideas or your beliefs. And so you dumb yourself down. You make things simple. You make things easy. And you make yourself bored to the death because every single human exchange you have becomes a curse every conversation becomes draining everything becomes boring life becomes overwhelming because you created your own hell and infjs can be good at that creating their own hell you know creating a life where they only find and seek out people that don't care people that only engage in small talk people that only uh, care about you know what's new or what's on the news or what they saw on reality TV. You create your own hell by getting stuck in that adaptive response. And of course, it's understandable. Everyone has fear of reaction. Everyone struggles and everyone wants to fit in. And, you know, not fitting in, that can mean, you know, like death. It can mean like in old days, you know, it can mean being burnt on a stake. So it's, of course, natural to have that fear. But you're going to ask yourself, you know, am I going to want to stay alive or am I going to want to live? Am I going to want to stay alive in this kind of hell I've created for myself in these one-sided relationships with these people that I don't really care for, who don't share my interests, who don't share my passions? Or am I going out and I'm gonna, am I going to go create my own heaven? Are you going to build real, real valuable relationships? And I mean here relationships that have value to you. Are you going to go out and talk about a cause or a mission that you are genuinely passionate about? Or are you going to say only what other people want to hear? 
Are you going to go out and talk about your vision or your hobby or your interests and find other people who share those interests? Or are you going to continue to engage in passive small talk only with people who bore you to death? <laughs> and so that's the choice you're going to have to learn to make, to be bold and confident, to be passionate. And when you do that, when you recognize that, you're going to learn that extroverted feeling, that's not a weakness. Your kindness is not a weakness. Your kindness, when invested in the right people, for the right cause, for the right reasons, because it's in line with your vision and with your ideas, with your morals, is a superpower and has the potential to topple governments and change the world. So go out and use it to topple governments. Don't go and use it to compromise yourself and your identity. Use it for the right reasons. Let it be a weapon for the right cause, not a weapon that will sabotage yourself.